It is July the 2nd, 626 AD, just before dawn. Taiji Palace in Chang'an, the heart of the Tang Dynasty, seems silent and peaceful. Suanwu Gate, situated on high ground on the north side of the palace, offers a panoramic view of the imperial city. It's time for the changing of the guard. None of the guards know that some of them have just a few hours left to live. The sage is set for the silent Xuan War Gate to witness a sinister tragedy at the climax of what is a family feud. By this time, the past hesitation and fears of all those involved are all in the past. This dawn will soon witness the shedding of royal blood and tears. Li Shermin has hardly slept all night, and now he is waiting outside of Xuan Wu Gate with a well armed band of loyal warriors. This band includes such famous generals of the early Tang dynasty as Yu Chu Jingde, Zhang Yaojin, Qin Shubao, and Zhang Shigui. As they wait, time seems to pass very slowly in the still air. Li Xiumin clearly realizes that his destiny will soon be forever changed. He can smell victory in the air. In the southern pass of the imperial city, officials have begun gathering at Taiji Palace for the morning assembly. Palace maids and units are preparing for their day's work. Meanwhile, Li Shimin is getting more and more nervous. He knows that Li Yuan, who is close to Xuan Wu Gate, will soon learn about his unauthorized gathering of soldiers. Li Yuan is a person who is used to be used. His idea was that he was going to have a meeting. 这些兄弟啊，什么人要要对峙，讨论是不是有迎难后攻的问题。可是，没想到呢，这个所谓的会议，不过是李世民的一个调虎离山之计、啊。Every second seems to drag on forever as they wait in the dead silence. And then, suddenly, Crown Prince Li Jiancheng and Prince of Qi Li Yuanji. Appear on the road leading to Xuan Wu Gate.
No one knows what strange omen urged Li Jiancheng and Li Yuanji to stop before reaching the gate. We will also never know what it was that Li Shimin yelled to his brothers as he rode towards them. Whatever it was he said, his younger brother quickly responded with what would be the final act of his life. Shenzhen的不是一个人 大哥,叫我何事啊? While his younger brother readied an arrow to shoot Li Shimin, Li Shimin aimed at his prime political opponent, Crown Prince Li Jiancheng. His plan called for getting rid of both of his two brothers this morning, but Crown Prince Li Jiancheng was first on his list. Li Jiancheng, then 37 years old, sat frozen on his horse as he watched his younger brother aim at his other brother at close range. He watched in shock as Li Shimin took aim at him. As the arrow flew towards him, his eyes were locked on Li Shimin, his younger brother, and his prime political opponent. In a flash, it was all over. Yeah. 
感情。In quick succession, two of the three princes of the Tang Dynasty were beheaded. Their years of conflict over the throne had come to a bloody end in the blink of an eye. They had written a crimson chapter in history and left a blank for the events to follow. Historical records tell us that Li Yuanji was an excellent archer. In fact, when he was younger, he used to shoot fleeing captives for fun. But at that critical moment, he couldn't fire on Li Shuming, even after three attempts. Stranger still is that while Li Yuanji was aiming at Li Shuming, Li Shuming. Aimed at Li Jiancheng, who never moved a muscle. Li Shuming should have been afraid that Li Yuanji, famous for his marksmanship, would hit him before he could kill Li Jiancheng. Is it possible that he somehow knew that Li Yuanji would never shoot at him that morning? 就是再三不听，我觉得应该是大剑没有打上。你射吗？是吧？才能拉吗？那手要一抖就搭不上。他他这因为太紧张，就是再三度就搭不上。说多少要做才算。所以真是面对兄弟，真是想要射杀他，恐怕这个这个内心的挣扎，内心的这种呃
In addition, his relations with Li Shimin had been severely strained for some time. His nervousness plus other unknown factors led to this tragic end for the young prince. But Li Yuanji wasn't the only one who seemed to act out of character. <laughs> After killing Li Jiancheng, Li Shimin, a skilled equestrian since his teens, fell off his horse. This put him in great danger. It seems likely that after the shock of killing his older brother, it took him a few minutes to recover. Within minutes, Crown Prince Li Jiancheng and Prince of Qi Li Yuanji were both dead outside of Xuanwu Gate. Li Shimin had succeeded in carrying out the first and most critical step of his plan to take the throne. All that was left was to deal with the Emperor Li Yuan. But then he had to deal with an unplanned chain reaction. As part of his plan, Li Shimin had already gained the support of the Imperial Guards. He reasoned that after getting Li Jiancheng and Li Yuanji out of the way, their political clique would collapse. But Li Shimin underestimated the loyalty of Li Jiancheng's followers. When he learned of the death of Li Jiancheng, General Feng Li didn't flee. Instead, he rushed to Xuanwu Gate with 2,000 soldiers from the Eastern Palace and the residence of the Prince of Qi. His intention was to avenge the deaths of the princes. In the ensuing battle, Li Shimin's soldiers guarding Xuanwu Gate all died. Both sides were determined to fight to the death. And outside Xuanwu Gate, blood flowed like a river. Since he couldn't quickly take Xuanwu Gate, General Feng Li decided to attack Li Shimin's residence. This took Li Shimin by surprise, since he had moved almost all his soldiers to Xuanwu Gate. This left his residence unprotected. This situation put Li Shimin's wife and children in great danger. If his family were captured, Li Shimin would pay a heavy price for his victory. At this critical moment, Li Shimin's follower Yu Chu Jingde displayed the severed heads of Li Jiancheng and Li Yuanji from atop the Imperial City Wall. The morale of the army from the Eastern Palace at the gate was decimated. Shiva
，我讲明白。去吧，是。见着易世敬德，第一个念头是认为易世敬德来杀自己的，你是不是来杀我的？其实是在问这个话。易世敬德的话呢，让他有了一点安心，就说：“呃，太子齐王谋反，已经被秦王镇压了，秦王派我来保护陛下的安全，看来不不想杀我。”Emperor Gaozu was in a tough situation. The Crown Prince and the Prince of Qi, Li Yuanji, were both dead at the hand of his other son. Li Yuanji had been the one chosen to lead an army against the Turks the next day. Li Shimin, already well known as a military hero, was now the undoubted next in line for the throne. Now that Li Jiancheng was out of the picture, Li Shimin was the only living son of Li Yuan's first wife. Faced with Yu Chu Jingde's blood-stained armor and knife, several courtiers had already showed where they stood. Li Yuan had no choice but to accept the bitter truth. He knew that he was already 60 years old and he could not hold on to the throne forever. The only person qualified to succeed him was Li Shimin, the only living son of his first wife. Shu 太子原来就没什么功劳，啊，这从晋阳起兵，到后来打天下，都是秦王的功劳。现在已经这个样子了，那还能有什么选择呢？同意他就完了，顺了吧就行了。所以皇帝，那只能这样了。就按你说的办吧。玉珏金德 was actually acting on behalf of Li Shimin. Li Yuan accepted his demand, indicating acceptance of his fate. The first order of Emperor Li Yuan that morning removed any reason for the army from the Eastern Palace and the residence of the Prince of Qi to continue resisting. And in the wink of an eye, the soldiers changed from men justifiably seeking revenge for the death of the princes 
to rebellious traitors. None of them wanted to stand up for someone who was dead. The resistance ceased and the guards still in the Eastern Palace and residents of the Prince of Qi were dismissed. Seeing that the situation was hopeless, Feng Li dropped his weapon and walked away, restoring tranquility to Xuan Wu Gate. He had done what he could to repay the Crown Prince for his kindness, and he now knew that it was all over. It was time for Li Shimin to meet his father, the Emperor. He changed into court dress and cleaned himself up. He was not Yu Chue Jingde. He could not and nor did he need to use his brother's blood to antagonize his father.投注之后就是父母双亲怀疑自己的儿子那李世民这个事情呢李渊就说那就是我差点也怀疑你差点也怀疑你极有吗几乎是这样的吗那这个话呢就是我现在不怀疑你了那你做的对我原来怀疑过
Li Yuan must also have been weeping. He could never have imagined that he would one day see two of his sons die, or that he would also soon lose many grandchildren as well. After taking the Eastern Palace and the residence of the Prince of Qi, Li Shumin ordered all of the male descendants of any age of Li Jiancheng and Li Yuanji to be killed. Finally, he also ordered the deletion of the names of those descendants from the official record of the imperial family. Jiancheng On the day after the Xuanwu Gate incident, Feng Li, who had almost stormed the residence of the Prince of Qin the day before, now volunteered to serve Li Shimin. Chuo 他还是问的这句话就不谈这个问题了而是谈别的问题这样的话就等于说我跟太子的战略认识有区别但是跟秦王是很近的对不对所以唐太宗听懂了别人还没听懂呢唐太宗听懂了就说好吧安排工作你既然服了那就算了吧On the third day after the Xuan Wu Gate incident Li Yuan issued a decree naming Li Shimin as crown prince and turning over all military and government affairs to him. All decisions were to be reported to the emperor. Soon after, Li Shimin assumed the emperor's authority. Li Yuan isolated himself from the outside world and quietly faded from view. Two months after the massacre, Li Yuan turned over the throne to the only living son of his first wife. With that, Li Shimin officially became the second emperor of the Tang dynasty. 
No one knows how Li Yuan felt during those two months. It's a blank space in history that has left later generations guessing. We only know what the histories record as the activities of Li Shimin, the new crown prince, during those two months. On July the 31st, Li Shimin appointed Qin Chiung, former leader of his guards, and Yu Chu Jingde as top generals. On August the 3rd, he appointed Fang Xuanling, Jiang Sun Wu Ji, and Du Ru Hui to high government posts. On August the 4th, he appointed Du Yan and Zhang Gongjin to other important government posts, and Li Ke Shi to a high military post. With these appointments, Li Shimin's clique and his palace supporters were now in control of all the major government departments and positions. So they now held all military and government authority. Some scholars have analyzed that at this time, the Shimin has already been put in place and put him in place and put him in place. So he has been put in place and put him in place. So he has been put in place and put him in place and put him in place. 就弘一宫嘛，后来就改名叫大安宫，他最后就去世就在这宫里。这些学者分析可能是有道理，那就是说他把软禁，这实际上也是一切权利都已经归了李世民。As the founder of a dynasty and a father, Li Yuan might have clung to one last hope. That was to reach a compromise with his son. That would allow him to remain on the throne with Li Shimin as crown prince. He wanted to maintain good relations with his son, just as he had done with Li Jiancheng over the past nine years. Plus, whether he came to the realization himself or received a communication from Li Shimin, he knew it was hopeless. Li Yuan finally concluded that he had to give up all his power in order to reassure his only son and live in peace. The Yuan's strong will and his self-control saved his life and objectively prevented an even larger tragedy over a power struggle. The Xuan Wu Gate incident was the successful culmination of Li Shimin's plan. And even though it was only formulated at the last minute, everything had gone fairly smoothly with a minimum of casualties. 这个是李渊的一个性格弱点，应该说玄武门之变和他之前的处置失误是有关系的。如果说他在比较早的时候就意识到李世民功高难赏的话，那你应该挫折一下的功劳吧，不要时时处处都让他去处冲在前头，或者说你给李建成更多的表现机会，然后让他能够在这个臣民心目中树立起更高的形象，或者你就这个壮士断腕，就算李世民有非常大的功劳。我也要保证太子的安全，我一定要把他拿下。或者你就说，我更愿意欣赏一个英才，而李世民他这么年纪轻轻就有这么大的功劳，我认为他是一个不世出的君主，就干脆把李建成拿掉。无论哪一个，他都可以做，但是他最后都没做，所以最后才成了皇帝，其实是一个被人利用、被人左右的这么一个一个角色了。然后下边帝国乱成一团。所以我想呢，可能他的这种对心情的重视啊。这种老谋深算呢，在一定程度上也也误导了他，使得唐朝在一次建国之后还要来一个再次建国。其实玄武门之变，我认为是一个再次建国的过程啊。On October the 26th, 626 A.D., Li Shimin, on the throne less than two months, issued a decree to name the former crown prince as King Shi Yi. And his late younger brother, the former Prince of Qi, as Duke Hailingla. He also ordered them reburied and given a royal funeral. He may have done this to stabilize the political situation or to ease his guilt. Perhaps both. It was said that on the day of the funeral, 
Mi Shumin cried bitterly and seemed to be greatly moved. As Li Jianchang's former official, Wei Zheng asked permission to accompany the hearse to the burial site. Li Shumin approved his request and ordered that all the former officials from the Eastern Palace and the residence of the Prince of Qi be allowed to participate in the funeral procession. After Li Shumin had been on the throne two years, the title of his reign was changed to Jianguan, marking the beginning of the Golden Age of Jianguan. On July the 8th, 642 AD, 16 years after the Xuanwu Gate incident, Li Shumin issued an official decree to restore Li Jiancheng's title of Crown Prince. Mei 就会记得少一点，就是正面分多了，负面的分就会自然就会少一点。所以也有人认为呢，这是玄武门事变对贞观之治的又一个影响。这个影响就是因为皇帝有原罪意识，所以他要改变这种印象，所以就更努力啊，
undoubtedly haunted Li Shimin the rest of his life. When officials were praising him at court or when he studied official documents in his study, his older brother's frightened eyes and the wailing of his nephews must have often crossed his mind. For Li Shimin and his golden age of Zhen Guan, the Shuan Wu Gate incident was like an ugly stain on an otherwise pretty picture. Although this stain could never completely ruin the picture, it has never really faded. Even upon closer inspection, over 1,300 years later.